after a short delay, apparently there were some weather issues going on over to Japan, you know, some heavy typhoons from what I heard, you know, the, we got the chapter, but all in all though, I am hoping that, you know, people are safe over there and things are going well, but for now, let's look at this chapter. There was a lot to really digest, because we got some good information on other kingdoms, we got information on what's coming up, and it looks like uh, an explanation on this new character that I, you know, I, I heard about him, I heard some people talking about him, I was really curious because it seemed like there was a lot of hype about this dude, and it looks like his magic is pretty broken. So, you know, leaving off to where we were in the last chapter, Asta uh, is revealed that he uh, apparently is going to die, and, you know, we got the other countries looming in, uh, being a threat to the Clover Kingdom, some pretty heavy stuff going on. And like I said, I, I didn't think it was going to be like, Asta, you're going to die in 10 minutes. I think it was going to be more like a lead up to a potential death or more of like him die as a person. Maybe like the devil takes over his body, the one, the anti-magic one. But while they're talking about it, uh, they, they reveal it's because, you know, Asta's power, you know, comes from uh, a devil. It comes from the anti-magic devil. Still don't know a name for the guy. And similar to the word devil, you know, people are going to you know, associate things, you know, the people that know about this. Because they say that black horns are actually a, a sign of, of, like, crossing into forbidden spells that are connected to the other world where all the demons are from. As you know, Asta, you know, having the horn. And people have seen it, like, at the Royal Magic Night exams. Everybody there uh, is it's in knowledge of Asta having this form. So, you know, the question comes in there. Which actually explains why uh, explains why Sekri has her little set of horns. But they're, they're going over this. And Asta's talking about, like, he's always felt like another presence when he's using his, uh, his, his black form, his anti-magic form. But he didn't ever, you know, associate with being a devil. Noel seems has always had suspicions from stories she heard, she heard when she was younger. And uh, there's the good question of just like, will Asta now try and communicate with uh, with the anti-magic devil? Because we know the guy is, it's not like he needs to be some like weird case of, uh, you know, talking to him. As we saw like when Asta originally, you know, met him and talked to him. It wasn't like he pulled him in, you know, also got the form over him, then they conversed, and then once the word devil was dying, he somehow ended up confronting him. So I feel like it would be something that he could kind of, like, maybe talk to Austin, you know, maybe in his head, or try and pull him into a conversation. Very, very curious about that aspect, but and there was some good comment, it's just like, uh, like Noel asking if Asta's okay, and he's like, of course I'm okay, it's just, you know, my entire body is aching in pain, you know, every single muscle in me is screaming. But then Mimosa's just like, I don't, I don't, I don't think that's, uh, I don't think that's okay. Um, it, maybe she's now she's got a, she's got a good chance and an excuse to go try and heal him. Yami, of course, is just, you know, thought Austin to get away from him because he doesn't want to catch his devil-like disease, as he said. Just putting jokes on. And actually gave a name to it, the Curse of Vague. I don't know how to pronounce that. V-E-G-H. Be interesting stuff. So that, that'll be a sign throughout the series, anytime a character has pushed into this level of forbidden magic. Anytime a character has gone into this zone, they're going to have horns. So that is a, that's a nice little trait we'll see. And whether that is going to be permanent or in a form, we don't know. But uh, all in all, I guess with Sekri, they're permanent. Asta will probably get his permanent at some point. But for now, that is a nice little addition uh, to what we got. Also, funny enough, it looks like Sekri or Nero. I, I'm very curious to what she's going to go by. You can just go into her bird form at will, it seems, and just kind of go, you know, pop, change, pop back and forth, which is actually really useful. That's actually a really useful thing to get. I imagine, though, the 500 years uh, in between, you know, getting put into this form and being able to change freely into it was probably pretty shitty. But now she can fly, so it's like you got an extra thing. Even, uh, even Julius noted that it wasn't just the same as normal transformation magic. So, you know, that's a plus. So it probably doesn't have, like, a, you know, a cost of magic to turn into. So that's going to be handy. She's always got an escape, you know, free-range travel. Always going to be a plus on her. But then they get back to talking about the other kingdoms. And this is one of the things that I thought was really intriguing because in the data book, uh, I think it was over a year ago. I don't remember the exact date. I don't remember the date it came out, and I don't even remember the date that somebody translated it. But you find out a little bit about each of the kingdoms. You know, we know about the Diamond Kingdom. They're very militaristic. They have a lot of, like, human experimentation. And they're, they're, they seem to be getting a little bit desperate because they're starting to run low on resources. We have the Heart Kingdom, which is, like, this lush, you know, land of, like, green and, and vegetation. 
And then we have the Spade Kingdom, who is, was like this land of cold and fog and is the largest one. And in this one, we find out a little bit more about them. Though, obviously, with there, well, there was some stuff like adding into the Diamond Kingdom because I don't remember this being mentioned earlier. Is that, uh, as Julie says, that they have uh, pretty much types of black magic. So they're going to probably have their own forbidding magic, like kind of like up and ready. So they might have their own horned characters, like in the back, which would be really cool. Like we already saw their. Uh, Battle wizards, you know, combat mages. Uh, back, what was it? Right after the uh, the short invasion, then you have the uh, the confrontation between William and Yami, and then we saw the one they they're like, we don't need the the trash ones that we got rid of of the shining generals. We got battle mages now, but that would be really cool if it's like, oh yeah, we have this many uh, shining general battle mages, but we also have like two or three like pretty much wild cards we keep like locked up. You know, pretty much like a beast. Or maybe they're not going to be like Sano, they're just going to you know, run wild. Maybe they'll be kind of like partially transformed. That is alone, I think, will be really cool. In an idea for the Diamond Kingdom, because I still think the Diamond Kingdom is going to be first. Though, it, I think it's going to be the Diamond or the Heart Kingdom. And I'll go into why that is uh, at the end of this video. And then we got information about uh, the Heart Kingdom. Is that they have, you know, their land is very rich in mana. They have mastered, they, they apparently have mastered their own type of magic, which I'm very curious about. And they're they're very mysterious, and a lot of their land is you know unexplored. I I, I gotta be perfectly honest. Uh, if I got to live in the Black Clover world, I feel like I'd pick the Heart Kingdom. They just seem like the 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 coolest to live in. I just love that like dense jungle line like terrain and the, like all the mysteriousness about it. While not being like as intense as the as the the Spade Kingdom because the Spade Kingdom was always kind of like believed. By a lot of people, they're going to be the, you know, the, the big dogs. They're the biggest out of the three enemies, but, well, no, because the Heart Kingdom is uh, neutral. Out of the other kingdoms besides the Clover, but it looks like they're stronger than the Clover Kingdom. Um, because it says, like, by serving, a, a, like, an ancient horror that sleeps below, like, in their, in their land, uh, like, extreme cold and bitterness, they have achieved, like, they say supremacy, at least in this translation. I'm, I'm curious what the official one will say on Sunday. Um... And that they even called them the Demon Nation of Spade. So the Spade Kingdom potentially has their own demon that they keep, you know, maybe like, maybe it's going to be inside their castle underneath. I know uh, Broku no Hero talked about how there is a, because uh, Tabata like does a lot of stuff with like Norse stuff. I think he's Norse, his name was like Njord, I, I, something like that. He was like a, he was like this king of like uh of like frost or something maybe i think it was maybe of the north i don't remember he told me once i forgot but he uses a wooden spade as a weapon which could be like you know a, a little bit of a lead on what tabata plans for here or maybe like a demon themed after that uh apparent god or king or whatever he was that is very intriguing on its own because like if that if we got information furthering like oh why are they the strongest and one of them is like no they straight have a demon that they, you know, serve, that runs their kingdom. That's going to open up a lot of questions, because then it's like, also, how many of their demons were? Is this the plan of the demons? Do they want to come over and build these kingdoms? Do they just want to, you know, have maybe their own, like, systems and, and people that, you know, worship them? And then, uh, I don't know. It's a good question, because, again, we don't know a lot about the demons in general. But there, there's so much intriguing kind of, like, little bits of lore and layout in different directions this chapter. It wasn't like, oh... Here's the kingdoms, but we're going to talk about this one and just give a ton of information on one. It was a sprinkle of both, a sprinkle of the information on the demons, you know, just moving around a lot of stuff, which I thought was extremely intriguing. It gave just a lot of, like, uh, uh, a lot of wonder to what's going to come up next. The Spade Kingdom, though, I, I, there's no doubt they're going to be the last one, because they're, they're just made up so much bigger than the other two. But my only kind of potential one that i would say would be stronger is maybe the heart kingdom because maybe they you know they're gonna have that like position where the clover because they're like allies you know as they say the neutral nation they um well they say allies on one of the things but then they say neutral in this one i don't know i, I guess it just really just depends I, i'll wait for the official translations but maybe the fact that you know it's like neutral or ally it's like we're not worrying about them worrying about these other two and then it turns out the you know the heart kingdom Kind of like put on that facade just to get you know on get off the radar in order to do whatever it is they do very questionable very very interesting in how they're going about things and we already know that uh the clover or the diamond kingdom has already started to try and expand outside of their land into you know the 
the the magic areas in between what was it the uh forbidden forbidden lands I, I can't remember the exact name of that actually you know all this space in between where like the witches four star there's a bunch of dungeons uh but they're going over there as well uh, the the grand magic uh grand magic zone so they're trying to expand trying to find you know more dungeons and whatnot and trying to get equipment but and they revealed that because um asa's demon that the magic congress which is really intriguing because during the whole uh, recent stream I did when we were talking about uh, about William and like his crimes is I brought up that we, we don't know a lot about the other uh, we don't know a lot about the Clover Kingdom's like political system. As far as we knew, the it was like the king and Julius and then like the captains were you know high ranking people in their government because you know the, the magic knights are a military. But it looks like they have their own just straight political system, which makes sense, but you know obviously, we didn't have a reason to know about them for now. There was nothing really important for us to get of them. But it is intriguing to see how, how they're going to be played in the story now. Because they, you know, they're going to use a scapegoat. The Black Bulls obviously having, uh, you know, the, the lowest kind of like spot uh, reputation-wise with them. Um, with Asta being a, uh, a peasant and having, you know, obvious knowledge through people that he's got this form where he puts on a horn. You know, we're going to really into the devil that they're going to maybe try and use him like as as just like a a pretty much a big public execution figure to try and calm down the people. I'm very intrigued by I don't think that's going to happen. But that's one of the reasons I think will lead up to um lead up to what I think might happen next because of this character. Was they're talking about like the 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 pretty much the royal house of Kira, obviously that being the uh you know, the, the king, like Augustus Kira Clover, uh, him being the current king of the Clover Kingdom, um, that they would possibly, you know, try and take out Asta. Like I said, use him as a scapegoat. And he was already willing to uh, kill Asta and, you know, execute them for being disrespectful to him. Which it's like, it was kind of like, a, I don't agree with straight execution, but at the same time, even at that part, I was like, Asta and Yuno should probably respect him. He's still her king. But... He he doesn't seem like a terrible person. Like I remember, he 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 was not on board with Langris executing uh, Finral during the uh, Magic Knight exams. Like he's not a bad guy. He just seems like kind of a douche. Um, but he was saved. He was saved by none other than Seki, which I'm very happy about. I'm I've always been very uh, I've always been indifferent about Seki. A lot of people like kind of just see him more as the joke character and make fun of him. I actually like him because his magic that we've seen is actually cool. He's got his Seki Magnum Cannonball, which again, it's a both offense and defensive spell, which is actually pretty useful. You know, you put up a shield and then you send blasts out of all these different areas. And then he's got his, uh, what is Seki Shooting Star. If he didn't have a mold of himself on that, that thing would be so cool. And there's nobody that could deny that. It's got like these sick Dyson uh, vacuum spheres for wheels. It's like a pretty much a motorcycle. I, I, I've always liked Seki. I'm really hoping that he eventually, like, becomes, like, a big deal. Maybe he becomes a captain one day and, like, abandons the joke character facade. I, I'm really hoping for that. But he, like, kind of coincidentally, just by sheer luck when trying to defend the king, um, was right when the uh, the elves were all dispelled out of the, the bodies. And he just looks like a hero now in front of the king. So he's probably going to get a rank up. So I'm, I'm hoping that goes well for him. I like Seki. I, I, I don't want anything bad to happen to him. But then, near the end, we have some of the Eye of the Midnight Sun, like Leftovers, going to kill the king. And one of the characters that got brought in seems to be not only broken, not only broken, but I'm guessing he's going to be part of the Magic Congress. Like, he's going to be, like, a big political character. Um, it's not only because, like, he... Um, it looks like he's pretty close to uh, Augustus, but also, like, this dude... Demacio, I think Stan was pronounced, but uh, he even says like the the guys are saying like he's part of the house uh, Kira. So I'm wondering if he's like maybe uh, a younger brother of Augustus because we know you could have a lot of people in the same family, but it really just goes to like the oldest uh, and uh, yeah, that's what I usually think. I I don't know if they'd go by like because it usually it was like oldest son. Like I don't I don't feel like the Clover Kingdom would care about male or female at this point when you have like super badasses like Mary Leona and even before you had Aesir uh, Silva who was by herself like a super badass but I feel like it's just the oldest maybe he's like his younger brother or something and this dude's magic is broken this dude's magic is OP is, is balance magic I don't even know how he's gonna go about using that like I'm super intrigued because you got these guys attacking uh, Seki and Augustus 
and they pull out their spells. They pretty much all got these, you know, plain elemental weapons. And then this dude balances, like, does balance magic, and their like weapons turn into like toys, pretty much size. He shrinks their magic. He says, which is so intriguing of how he's going to go about doing that. So this guy, I've seen him. Like, a lot of people are hyping him up because he's got a broken magic, and he seems like, going to be like one of those characters. It would make sense for him to be captain level but not be a captain because he's more of a political character but obviously as a royal he would have high levels of magic and he also like i said broken magic in general so it'll make sense if he's really strong um but he's the reason why a lot of people including myself think that there's gonna have to be either some form of like uh, there, there's the question of are the black bulls gonna somehow like clear off his name but I'm, I'm still under the, the the possibility of them having to leave like they're gonna have to like kick rocks and and uh and go rogue because they might try and kill Asta, and the Black Bulls are not going to stand for that. Uh, you would have to try really hard to get them to kind of put on this facade of, like, maybe Asta and a couple of them are leave, but it wouldn't surprise me if the Black Bulls decide to all get up and go. And that could also be a reason why they made Julius, like, uh, a good reason why Julius is so much younger now. It's like, he can accompany them now, and he could be a member of the Black Bulls. Um, and you, you don't know who else could go. Maybe Mimosa will go as well. Uh, I just realized, like, almost, what, 16 minutes into this video that my, my Black Clover volume cover is not even centered properly, or even just set, set correctly. But uh, with that, I'm wondering if they're going to go towards the Heart Kingdom because they're apparently neutral slash allies. It would make sense why they'd go over there, you know, because they're not a threat, uh, at least in their mind. But also the Diamond Kingdom because they have Mars, you know, it could lead up into them trying to help overthrow, you know, the tyrannical control of Morris over the Diamond Kingdom. There's a lot to come out of this. It's, it's, it's so much that we're going to get in such, like, in possibility. Is, even though, like, obviously we got a lot laid out, I don't think they're going to the Spade Kingdom. It would seem kind of too rushed to go to the Spade Kingdom because they're obviously the biggest guys. Not only do they apparently have this big sleeping monster or just monster in general. I don't know if they think, I keep saying sleeping. Oh, no, it does say sleeping. And so uh, not only have that, but they're the only ones connected off the continent that they're on. So it might be spreading out. We don't know what other kingdoms we uh haven't heard about or the clover hasn't heard about that maybe the uh, the spade kingdom is allied with we could have like there could be like multiple kingdoms beyond the border that we've seen so far of the black clover uh map that they know about and they could be friends with or dealing with themselves and you know the, the clover is not gonna know um but my money is either on their leaving and going to either the heart or the diamond kingdom for obviously diamond kingdom plotline stuff or heart kingdom kind of like safest uh root stuff so tell me in the comments what you think this dude is cool i like his name uh dalmatio i think is how it's pronounced Danatio, because it's like damn a, a t o and i know i'm it's kind of like uh it makes atio demacio i'm just gonna call him that i think it's cool demacio probably uh kira clover i don't think he's gonna be the third the He'll be the long name because no, because Augustus is like he's like what like the eighth or something of his name. Maybe that's what they always call the first one. But anyway, I don't need to be speculating where Augustus got his name. Um, but other than that, tell me what you think in the comments. What you thought about this chapter? Um, tell me what you think is coming up. Where do you think this is going? Like I said, I think they're going to go rogue. Um, and well, I really appreciate the thumbs up the video, but from the like button and the subscribe button, and check out my other videos. From that, I appreciate everyone who's already subscribed, and I thank you all for listening. Bye.